Good morning, Waterfront Community Church. Come on in and take your seats. We've got plenty of empty seats down the front here, so do feel free to make your way out uh, down to the front. Um, Good morning. Isn't it a beautiful day outside? It's been a beautiful week, actually. I think some people are a bit tired of the heat, really, but we shouldn't be ungrateful, should we? Classic. Brits, isn't it? Um, We're going to start our service. I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to start with singing a wonderful song, and then I'm going to explain why I look like this today. Um, And you might have seen a fun table at the back with a Sunday Culture magazine. I'll tell you a little more about that as well. Um, But let me pray, and then we're going to start by singing, oh, praise the name. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness, for your kindness to us. Thank you for the body of Christ that is the church. Thank you for the fellowship of the saints. Thank you for the preaching of the word. Thank you for the way, by your spirit, you speak to us. And so do so today, I pray. Would we know your presence among us? Would we know you speaking to us today? Um, And would we want to live our lives um, to glorify you as a result of um, what we learn and how we uh, are fed today? Um, Hear our songs of praise now as well, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing, shall we?
take a seat. For endless days we will sing his praise. Gosh, I can't wait. Lord return soon, isn't it? Jesus come. Um, if you're watching at home, welcome. Uh, hello to our Tumble regulars and other friends um, who watch with us um, weekly. Now, it is an exciting day for me because today, look what goes on sale. The Sunday Culture Magazine. Come on, we've been waiting for this, surely. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time coming. We've been planning this and prepping this since, um, what, after Easter sometime. There's about 38 articles, contributors from members of Sunday Culture. Um, Pastor Warren and Arnie have also contributed as well. And I'm hoping it will bless us and encourage us um, as a church. Um, it says, Sunday Culture, a magazine special in celebration of all the Lord has done, especially in the past year. So these are on sale at the back of the church. They are £3 per magazine bargain price, I'd say. Um, especially after you read it, you'll feel like you want to contribute more because of how good it was. You can't believe it was so cheap. So you can find me later as well and give some more cash if you'd like to. Um, we're only taking cash today. If you want to pay via a card and things, we can do that another week. But for today, just uh, if you've got three pounds cash on you, great. So they'll be at the back. Um, lovely. Now, some of you, especially those of you at home, might be thinking, why on earth does Meg look like that today? What is she wearing on her head? Well, this is a bucket hat. A bucket hat sorry. It's very in at the minute. They're very fashionable, actually. Um, and I'm wearing my green CCOW camp because a few of us have just returned from camp. Because of COVID, we had two years with no camp. And I forgot how important camp was in my year. Um, I grew up as a kid, always going on camp from the age of 10. And it was almost like you, if you struggled in your faith throughout the year, it was okay because you knew camp was coming in the summer. You knew you would meet with the Lord when you'd get to camp. Um, I don't know if anyone else has been on camps and experienced a similar thing. Um, I would love to invite our camp attendees up, though, if we could. Marla, Abby, and Dan, if you could come and join me up here, just ever so briefly. Come on up. Um, so Dan and I went as leaders to a field in Tawin in North uh, Wales somewhere. We took with us Abby. This is Billy's sister, for those of you who haven't met Abby before, but don't just know her as Billy's sister. She's her own person. Her name is Abby. Um, and Marla came with us as well. And we had an absolute blast. I mean, isn't God good? I would love for you to come and talk to us after and ask us what our highlights were, how did the Lord speak to us in different ways, um, because I've had a whole fresh new view of Jesus, and I can't wait for heaven, and it is hard being a Christian now, but... Um, the speaker on the final night, you, a final day, used an illustration of walking up Cader Idris. Has anyone walked up Cader Idris? Guys, we need to, yes, one member. Gosh, shame. Let's all go. Let's have a trip to Cader Idris so we'll understand this a bit more. But when you walk up a mountain, you have that horrific steep climb to begin with. Oh, it's so high and you're tired and you already want to have a break and you only just started. So you feel bad about how unfit you are. But everyone's thinking the exact same thing, but you just keep going anyway. Um, you want to already have your drink and snacks, but you probably shouldn't because you know you've got another hour or two to go. Um, and it's hard. And you do stop, and then you think, oh, this is a nice break. Oh, no, cramp. I shouldn't have stopped. Like, it's, it's an upward climb, and it's a challenge. But you know that the view at the top is going to be incredible. Cader Idris, where we go, we stop, and there's a lake at the top. And the, the heat that they walked up this year, I did not go, obviously. But others went, like Dan. And you got to the top, and there's a beautiful lake. So you're hot, you're tired, you're sweaty in this blazing sun that we've never seen in this country before. Um, and then you can just plummet into the lake. The view is incredible. The feeling of rest is wonderful. And that is what it is like for us to be Christians now. Living a struggle, a life that is hard, but we know we're going to get to the lake at the top. How exciting. Honestly. Whoa. So come and talk to us after about that. But what about you guys? What did you like about camp? Dan, your first ever camp experience... Uh, how was it? I must admit, I sustained quite a few injuries. <laughs> the first first aid call for the week was for who? Any of the campers? No, for Daniel. And I saw him on the floor and thought, oh, I'm sure he's fine. And then someone shouted, first aid? I was like, oh, oh, okay. What happened? Might have played rugby for the first time. Potentially might have got concussed. Not sure, though. Yeah, we prayed from that night, though. He survived. He's okay now. Praise the Lord. What else? What, what do you enjoy about camp? What did you think? Tell us. Well, I thought it was awesome, apart from all the injuries I sustained. Uh, <laughs> you, you got, well, it was just brilliant because there's, there's a lot of people there, a lot of, lot of young people, and they, they, 
they've had some challenging backgrounds and experienced like hard times in, in family life and quite a lot of them are non-Christians and it's just awesome to be able to just, just be friends, be loving to them, have fun, do all the activities like walking up that massive hill thing, uh, doing some kayaking, dunking them in the water, that was great, uh, splashing them in the stream as well, I love that. I think, I don't think they'll let me back, uh, the amount of, you know, rampage cause and, and stuff, yeah. I'd be lucky if they invite me back. But then you got all that, you got all the, all of that, and then you, but the, the main thing is they get to hear the gospel. Uh, they get to hear about Jesus dying for them on the cross. And then seeing them hear that news for the very first time, because quite a lot of them are not from Christian backgrounds, is awesome. Yeah. And so that's like the main thing. You've got all the other stuff, and it's brilliant. But seeing that and then seeing like people come to faith whilst at that camp is, is, is unforgettable, really. So you'll go again? Yeah, probably. If we, if we, if we minimize the injuries that I sustain, I, I think, I think I'll, I'll go again, yeah. Wow, come on. Thank you, Dan. Excellent. Great. I'm sure they will have you back. You just might have to take your own personal first aid. Yeah, feel, feel free. Abby, gal, your first camp as well. Yes. How was it? Good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, chatty. Um, okay, favorite thing or uh, surprising thing or anything? I became a Christian. <laughs> she didn't tell me that that week. And I made cool bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> Great as well, excellent. I'm wearing one as well. Excellent, that is a cool bracelet. Gosh, why do you tell me that now on stage? That's so bad. Okay, Molly, I'm going to hand you the mic for a second. You have to take over. Thank you, Abby. Um, tell me, speak about camp for a minute. I'm just going to cry for a second and then get over that, and then you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a really great time. Um, it was nice get, like, being surrounded by people that were Christians or people that had like, a church background. Um, yeah, and also... There were, we had one night where we had um, a worship night and a few people became Christians and came to know Jesus. Which, yeah, And it's just nice to have conversations about the Lord with people my age or like close to my age. Yeah. So you'll be going again? Yes. Come on. So any other... Yeah, come on. You can take a seat. Thanks, Marla. So anyone else, if you've got kids between the ages of 11 to 17, like please give them to me next year for a week. I'll return them. Um, I'll definitely return them. Um, but we'll have a wonderful time hearing about the Lord and just having fun together as well. Um, if you want to pray specifically, I've got so many names. Dan will have names and um, we can pray. But we can also pray for our new sister, Abby. Flip in heck, Abby. We can pray for Abby in her new journey uh, with the Lord as well. So praise the Lord. Um, how exciting that we have a baptism to come as well. So we'll talk about that later. Um, one thing I read in a book before going on camp was that the Bible says God is holy and if God is holy it means he cannot sin and if God cannot sin he cannot sin against us which makes him the most trustworthy and reliable uh, person in all of existence amen amen um, and that was actually a song we sang a song this week that I think became a little bit of an anthem uh, called only a holy God and I don't know if we've sung it here but I want us to watch it um, if you want to stand and sing, go for it. Um, but please look at the words and um, see how good it is that we have a holy God. Um, so, and then I'm going to hand over to Nathan, who's going to lead the rest of the service. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.
Amen indeed. Isn't God great? He loves children. He loves each and every one of us. Um, before I go into the announcements, I just want to share something. Um, we're having a baptism next week. Arnie is going to go into that a bit later. Um, so it would be more appropriate to mention it now. In 10 days' time will be the 1,943rd anniversary of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. It happened in August the 24th, 79 AD. Um, so it happened in the morning, all of a sudden, nobody was expecting it, and thousands of people tragically lost their lives as the towns of Pompeia and the surrounding re regions were decimated, essentially. It's very sad. But um, one of the people we know there who died um, appears in the Bible. Her name is Drusilla. She appears in Acts 24, verse 24. Um, I'll read it out now. After some days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Felix was the governor of Judea, and Paul was under, was under trial then, and, he, and so Felix um, heard uh, Paul make his case, and his wife Drusilla was there also hearing Paul. So Drusilla heard the gospel. And it doesn't mention that she responded, so most likely she didn't. Uh, Felix was intrigued and heard Paul on more than one occasion with it, but uh, there's no record that he made a profession of faith. But we know from secular history that Dris uh, Drusilla later went to Pompeii, uh, 79 AD, so like 20 years later, and then she was one of the uh, thousands that died during the eruption. And so I just think that's a sobering message that um, we have heard the gospel, uh, God has told us that, and we could die at any moment. So as Jesus says, today is the day to be saved. Why? Because you might not have tomorrow to make that decision. None of us know when we're going to die. And for those of us who are Christians who know the Lord, um, as it says in Ephesians, um, let us redeem the time or let us make the most of our time because all of our time belongs to God. It's not our time. So let us make the most of it by serving him to do things that will have eternal consequences and eternal inheritance rather than doing things which will just be vain and will perish away. So um, that's a bit of history for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I hope you take the message to heart. So a few announcements. Um, we're going to be selling uh, Billy coffee uh, after the service. Um, um, so Billy uh, is going to be one of our members here, is going to be um, working for UCCF uh, next year from September onwards. UCCF is a Christian charity that works with Christian unions uh, throughout uh, the UK in different universities and colleges. And so he's going to be encouraging the Christians there with their faith and walk with the Lord and with evangelism, reaching non-Christian students. And he's going to be doing that full time and it's entirely uh, self-funded. So as part of the fundraising, we want to support Billy. He's going to be selling his uh, own coffee after the service. as It's going to cost one pound. So if you want to support him, yeah, please buy some coffee and enjoy it. It's quite tasty. We are also going to be selling our own church coffee, which is for free, but it's foul. So just please, for your own safety and <laughs> health, don't drink it. <laughs> um, excellent. So Arnie is going to come up now and talk about the baptismal service next Sunday. And then straight afterwards, Alison is going to come up and give a prophetic word or picture. And then Keith will give us the prayer, and then we'll have a time of worship together. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to remind you that next Sunday, there'll be no service uh, here at the church. Whatever the weather is going to be like, we will be down at Langland. Some of the girls from Hope House are getting baptized next uh, Sunday, and so there's one or two members here from Waterfront as well. So that's 11 o'clock down in Langland. So don't turn up in church here because you'll be on your own. But 11 o'clock, come rain, sun, sleet, or snow, we will be there next Sunday. Thank you. Good morning. Um, the Lord has given me a picture. It's of a person standing at the entrance to a valley. And although it's daytime, the valley is dark and dismal. And um, this person can't see the path in front of them. 
but knows he has to go through the valley. So he takes a step into the valley. And immediately, the sun shines down and lays out the next few yards of his path forward. He walks forward till he comes to another dark bit. And as he steps, whether it's to the right or to the left, he steps out and the sun shines down onto the path. And he makes his way through the valley this way till he comes to the exit. And when he comes out to the valley, he sees a huge mountain, steep-sided. And normally, he would have looked at that mountain and thought, my goodness, I'll never get over that. I'll never get around it. But because of the valley he's been through, and because of the light cast on his way, and the assurance that he's following the right path, he knows he can tackle that mountain. And I believe the Lord is telling us that sometimes we go through dark times in our lives. But as we step forward in trust, his word sheds light on our way and sets out the path before us. And whether we go to the right or to the left, if we are trusting him, he will assure us that he's with us and that he'll get us through. And when you get through, whatever you face then will be nothing in comparison to what you've experienced. And you will know that the word and presence of the Lord will help you tackle anything. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can be found in your house today. We thank you, Lord, you've been with us all week. Lord, but we come today to praise your holy, wonderful name. We praise you, Lord, for the work you've done in our lives and the continuing work that you're going to be doing in, Lord. Lord, we know we can trust in you for everything. So, Lord, we ask now that you come meet us by the power of your Spirit. Touch us in a way, Lord, which we haven't been touched before. You know every one of our needs, Lord. You know where we are. We ask you to touch us now. Let us go through that door after the service, Lord, in a different mindset, heart set, Lord, and the way we came in. We ask God in your wonderful name. Amen. to worship God, expressing your worship to him as you feel is appropriate.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's take our seats. Great to be in God's house this morning, isn't it? And to have a time of worship together and gather now around God's Word. Can I say it's great to have uh, Pastor Omri and Gwyneth Davis with us and their granddaughter, uh, Rhiannon, from Canada. So let's give them a good Swansea welcome. Bless you guys. And Pastor Romri is going to come now and read God's Word to us. We're in Hebrews chapter 7, and keep your Bibles open in Hebrews because we'll be uh, going from chapter to chapter this morning. Hebrews chapter 7, and commencing at verse 23 to the end. Well, good morning. John. It's fatal for an apostolic pastor when on holiday to go to an apostolic church. You're going to be asked to, to work. <laughs> so Hebrews chapter 7, commencing to read at verse 23. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. Amen? He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints a high priest men who are weak, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Thank you, Omri, for reading that passage to us this morning. The title of my message is Jesus, Our Great High Priest. Well, first of all, what is a priest? Well, a priest is someone who represents the people before God. In the Old Testament, we had the priests who represented the people before God by offering sacrifices and praying on their behalf. In the Old Testament, we find that the priests came from the tribe of Levi. However, the New Testament teaches the priesthood of all believers. And Peter had this to say to the Christians scattered throughout Turkey due to persecution. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, he says, But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a, peop a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So as Christians this morning, each and every one of us is a priest before God. And because of Jesus' death upon the cross of Calvary, all believers now have direct access to God through Jesus Christ, our great high priest. Listen to the author of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 4 and the verses 14 through to 16. Since then, we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, 
but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we might receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What a privilege to be able to access the very throne of God directly and not through any earthly priest. Hallelujah. You and I have direct access to God. And because of this privileged closeness with God, no other earthly mediator is necessary. As priests of the living God, we are all to give praise to the one who has given us the great gift of his son's sacrifice on our behalf. And in response, as we have heard from Nathan this morning, to share this wonderful grace with others. As believer priests, the author of Hebrews has this to say to us in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. He says, Fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. Here we have Jesus referred to as our high priest. We are priests because of his sacrifice, but he is our high priest. Now, what is a high priest? Well, here's a picture of what a high priest would have looked like in the days of Jesus. So he would have been robed in all his finery. And the chief or the high priest supervised the priests. He was the one that offered a sin offering on that great day of atonement. The high priest was the only one from among the priests who could enter within the veil into the Holy of Holies, and even he could only do so once a year on that notable day when he would carry with him a bowl containing the blood of the sacrificial animal and sprinkling it on the mercy seat, he would make atonement for the priests and the people. And the author of Hebrews calls you and me this morning to consider Jesus our high priest. And in my message this morning, this is what I want us to do, is to pause and consider Jesus our high priest. Because you see, Jesus entered heaven itself with his own blood, thus making atonement for the sins of the whole human race once and for all time. And his blood had saving significance for sin, not just for a 12-month, like the blood of the sacrificial animal, but forever. And listen again to what the author of Hebrews tells us. Forward to chapter 9 and verses 11 to 12, he says, When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Once was enough. His blood was sufficient to take away the sins of the world. This is Jesus, and this, this morning, is my high priest. 
Let me quickly share with you, let us consider then, seven exciting things about our high priest. First of all, I want you to note from the Bible that Jesus is a high priest appointed by God. Although Jesus never served as a priest in the physical temple in Jerusalem, he nevertheless was appointed by God the Father to be our great high priest in heaven. Listen again to the words of Hebrews 4.14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. And again, let me remind you of the words of Hebrews 5, verses 5 and 6. So Christ did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus this morning is not a high priest because of popular opinion. Jesus is not a high priest because of some democratic election. Jesus is not a high priest because he has been appointed so by a president or a prime minister. Jesus is our high priest because God the Father appointed him to this office. And Peter says of him, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You see, the Archbishop of Canterbury is appointed by the Prime Minister in consultation with the Queen as the head of the Church of England. In one sense, we can say it's a political appointment. However, Jesus is High Priest by divine appointment. The God who makes no mistakes has appointed Him this morning as High Priest. And thank God, my High Priest is by divine appointment. Second thing I want to share with you about him is this. Jesus not only is high priest by divine appointment, but Jesus is a permanent high priest. Hebrews 7, 23 to 25. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. You see, high priests of the old order served for a period of office and at death they ceased to minister and perform their religious duties. Another from the, uh, among the priesthood had to come and be appointed in his place to that office. Priests came and went. The high priest was appointed and then death overtook him. But my Jesus is a high priest forever and forever and forever. In this earth of ours, we come and we go. And if you were to ask the Israelites today who was the high priest at a certain point in time, they wouldn't be able to name him for you. The same when the day will come very shortly when people won't know who I am. And I've been the pastor here now for almost 25 years. But in months after my retirement, I would have been forgotten. Mark Davis was associate pastor with me here uh, for almost 20 years. And he moved away in retirement during COVID. And some may say, Mark who? We come and we go. 
But thank God, there is a man up in the glory. I have a high priest, and in a million years from now, should he tarry, he will still be the great high priest. And Jesus' name, he will still be on the lips of men and women. And history will record for us that there was a Jesus and that there is a Jesus. Jesus our great high priests, high priest hold this office permanently. He lives forever and is in no way threatened by death because he has triumphed over death, over hell and over the grave. He has been victorious over death and has destroyed Satan, Satan's power on the cross. And the author of Hebrews can declare, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So he's a priest appointed by God. He has a permanent priesthood. But listen, Jesus is also a perfect high priest. Omri read the scriptures to us. Such a high priest, says the author, meets our needs. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart, Apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens, unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak. But the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. High priests of old, despite their sincerity, their zeal, and their dedication to their high calling, they were all at best feeble and sinful men. They had their faults and their failings, their weaknesses and their personal defects. Jesus, as our great high priest, however, was tempted in all points just like us and every high priest before him, but not once did he yield to temptation. The high priests of old ministered out of human weaknesses and limitations. Jesus, on the other hand, ministered out of omnipotence. Jesus, our great high priest, is holy, is blameless, is pure, is set apart from sinners, is exalted above the heavens. Our high priest, the author of Hebrews says with confidence, such a high priest meets our need. All that you and I ever need is found in Jesus. He is perfection. Thank God this morning I know him. Thank God for this wonderful high priest that we have. But not only is he perfect? But Jesus is the high priest that offers a sacrifice which never needs repeating. Listen to Hebrews 7, 27. Unlike the other priests, high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, he sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. Hebrews 9, 12, He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The high priests 
of old had to offer day after day the same sacrifice which could never take away sin. On the day of atonement, he had to offer up sacrifices for himself, for the priests, and for the people. And this would go on year in and year out, day in and day out. There would be sacrifices at the temple. And the author of Hebrews says that day after day, the priests stood and offered oftentimes the same sacrifice which could never take away sin. But he goes on to say of Jesus, but this priest after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Why? Because his work was finished. The priest had to stand because he, his work never came to an end. But Jesus could take his seat because once and for all he had paid the price with his own blood for your sins and for mine. And his sacrifice was sufficient. It met the demands of a thrice holy God for sin and it was a perfect sacrifice and therefore never needs repeating. You see, the sacrifices of the old order was but a covering for sin. Every year they had to go through the same ritual. But Jesus Christ Christ's sacrifice took away sin. Hence, the, the John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized in the Jordan, could point at him and say, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And my friend, your sin and my sin has been dealt with once and for all at Calvary. And with bliss I rejoice and can sing this morning my sin or oh, the bliss of the glorious thought. My sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to His cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. Thank God for Jesus and his once and for all sacrifice for your sin and for mine. And then the other thing I want to remind you of Jesus as our high priest is this Jesus is our high priest who gives us continuous access to God. Hebrews 10 verses 19 through to 22. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, opened to us or for us through the curtain, that is, the, that is His body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, full of assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. You see, under the old order, the high priest could only enter within the veil once a year. And for any other to enter, it meant certain death. However, when Jesus was crucified, we read that that curtain, that thick veil that was in the temple, behind which only the high priest could enter, and only once a year, when Jesus died, that temple was torn from top to bottom, thus giving access to God via the blood of Calvary for every believer on the account that God the Father was pleased with the sacrifice of His Son and accepts all who are in the Son. Hallelujah! And so this morning, you and I can with the high priest of old enter behind that curtain into the most holy place to have the most intimate relationship with God the Father. And when the curtain of the temple was torn into Spurgeon, the great Baptist preacher said, not a small 
tear, not a small hole, but big enough, he said, for the worst of sinners to enter in. And thank God, this worst of sinners has entered within the veil, and I can have communion with Abba Father this morning because of Jesus. Under the old covenant, believers came to God via the mediation of a priest. Under the new covenant, it's the priesthood of all believers. We all, whether male or female, we all have direct access because of Jesus, our great high priest. Under the old covenant, the high priest entered within the veil in fear and trembling, hoping that the sacrifice was acceptable. And tradition has it that as he entered, a cord was tied around his waist. So if the blood was and the sacrifice was unacceptable, he would be struck dead. And nobody else could enter within that veil to get him out. And so the cord was there so that they could drag him out until another high priest was appointed who could enter. However, we are encouraged this morning to come boldly because we have the assurance that God the Father has been pleased with the sacrifice of His Son and therefore welcomes all who are in His beloved Jesus. And so Francis Bevan penned the words of that old hymn, No More Veil, God bids me enter by a new and living way, not in trembling hope I venture, boldly I his call obey, there with him my God I meet, God upon the mercy seat. And another said, all the worth I have before him is the value of the blood. And at the end of the day, my friend, as we enter within the veil, we don't come because there's some goodness or merit or some holiness that we have attained to. But all we have is the merit of the precious blood. And then, quickly, Jesus is a high priest who is faithful and merciful. Hebrews 2, 17, for this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Thank God that Jesus is our high priest. He has been tempted in all points just like us and yet never yielded to a single temptation. He is therefore a high priest who is sympathetic with our struggles and difficulties, with our weaknesses and failures. The author of Hebrews refers to him as a merciful high priest. And think of how merciful he was in his dealings with people when he was on earth. Think of the woman at the well. She'd had many husbands and was now living with another man. And yet... Jesus comes and offers her the water of life. A merciful high priest. Think of the woman caught in the very act of adultery. And the law of the day demanded her death by stoning. But Jesus said, let he who has no sin cast the first stone. And then he turns to the woman and said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Hey, thank God that Jesus is our high priest and that he's a merciful high priest. Think of Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. He's by the roadside and Jesus is passing and he cries, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says that there were crowds around Jesus and undoubtedly there would have been a lot of hustle and bustle and yet in the midst of the crowds with all their questioning, Jesus heard a blind beggar crying for mercy and my Bible says, and Jesus stood still. Not because a high priest was asking a theological question, 
but because a beggar was pleading for mercy. And I remember the late Pastor Tom Saunders preaching on that particular uh, uh, passage, uh, and he said that uh, when a sinner cries for mercy, heaven itself, itself stands still. And if you're listening this morning, whether here or at home, and you're not a Christian, cry to God for mercy. And listen, the great high priest will hear that faint cry of yours, despite all the noise of the praise in glory, and the cherubs and the seraphs crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of mighty. In through all that crescendo of praise, the great high priest will hear your whisper for mercy. Thank God that Jesus is our great high priest. He's also a faithful high priest. He is always the same. He's dependable. He is there for us. Will never let us down. Will never leave us or forsake us. You see, the high priests of time have their disappointments in us, become aware of our faults and our failings, and after a while, they'll write us off. But listen, Jesus Never, because he is a faithful and a merciful high priest. And then my time has gone quickly to close. Jesus is a high priest who continually pleads our cause in heaven. Hebrews 7.25, Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Today, with my many weaknesses and shortcomings, my needs and inadequacies, thank God I have a high priest in Jesus who faithfully pleads my cause before God the Father in heaven. Paul told Timothy, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Megan reminded us this morning of Kader Idris and that tough old climb up. And in my struggles, thank God I have a great high priest who continually pleads my cause in heaven. Alison reminded us of that dark valley. And we go through that valley more often than we wish. But thank God in the valley... I have a great high priest who pleads my cause in heaven. Yes, Jesus pleads for us in heaven by his own blood. He has entered once into the holiest there to appear in the presence of God for us. Jesus did not go to heaven after his earthly ministry and take a break. No. He went there and he pleads for me, because the author says he always lives to intercede for them. John Piper said, and I'm bringing him a message to a close with this. He said, This means our salvation is as secure as Christ's priesthood is indestructible. Our, me, the means, sorry, this means. Our salvation is as secure as Christ's priesthood is indestructible. This is why we need a priest so much greater than any human priest. Christ's deity and his resurrection from the dead secure his indestructible priesthood for us. Hallelujah. Thank God we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. This is Jesus, our great high priest. And the author of that great hymn says, and we're going to stand now and sing this hymn together, before the throne of God above, I have a strong 
a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. Let's stand and we'll take up the morning offering as we're singing. If you're a visitor, please feel at liberty in leaving the basket pass you by. We're just thrilled that you've joined us for worship this morning. Let's not rush away. Let's enjoy some tea or coffee. Billy's coffee will be just uh, uh, outside the door on your right if you want the freebie. That awful stuff, as we've been reminded by Nathan, then go through to the cafe. Let's enjoy fellowship together.